Alright, this video is going to go through a problem that involves Taylor polynomials. We're given a table of um, a couple of derivatives. Um, so the first question, we're given the table. Um, we're told that f of 3 is 2, so the whole thing's going to have to be centered at 3. And uh, we know that the first derivative, if you look at the table, the first derivative at 3 is 0, the second derivative at 3 is negative 2, um, and so on. So that's how you read the table. And then uh, the question is to determine the behavior of f of x at x equals 3. Which is kind of a strange question, but uh, these sorts of questions get kind of woven in, I guess, with uh, Taylor polynomial questions. So uh, first thing I'll notice is that f prime of 3 is 0. Um, so it could be a relative maximum, relative minimum, uh, could be neither. Um, so let's see. Uh, the next thing that we know, well, we know that from reading the table. Uh, the next thing we know is that f double prime of 3 is a negative 2, uh, also from the table. Um, so this actually we can use the second derivative test to determine the behavior. So since uh, f prime is 0, f double prime is less than 0, uh, I'm going to say that there's a relative maximum. And then I'm going to say by the second derivative test. And if you don't remember, that's uh, f prime being 0 tells us that we have a horizontal asymptote, uh, tangent line rather. And then uh, the second derivative being zero tells us that we are, uh, being less than zero, holy cow, uh, tells us that we are uh, concave down. So the picture kind of looks like that. So it must be a relative maximum. All right. Uh, the next question, we want a third degree Taylor polynomial for f um, centered at x equals three. So you have to remember the formula. So it's a sum. The nth derivative at a, uh, x minus a to the n over n factorial, and then n goes from zero to infinity, if you're writing a series, um, we're going to write a polynomial, so it's going to stop. Uh, and then you have to also make sure that you know how to peel this apart. So that's going to be f of a plus f prime of a, x minus a to the first over 1 factorial, plus, and then f double prime of a, um, x minus a squared over 2 factorial. Um, and then for our purposes, we need to go to 3. So we'll have that. But the series in general would be plus dot dot dot. Okay, so... Um, f of x is approximately, since it's not the series, um, it's just a polynomial, it's only approximately equal to this. Let me just fill in. So um, f of 3 is 2, that's given um, up there, and then plus uh, 0 from the table, and then x minus 3 to the first over 1 factorial. I always write that in just to uh, make sure I can carry out the pattern, um, plus the negative 2 from the table, and then x minus 3 squared over 2 factorial. The thing that people usually forget when they're writing these is they forget to center it at the uh, proper location, which means that the approximations that you get are just horrible. Um, so if, if you find that that's the case, uh, playing around with the calculator, you probably forgot to center it. And then uh, finally, we put the 1 out of the table, and then x minus 3 cubed over 3 factorial. And that's what we were asked to find, so that'll be the answer to this question. Not a big deal. Uh, this next part, we're given that uh, the fourth derivative is decreasing and that the fourth derivative is greater than or equal to negative 1 for all x. We want the Lagrange error bound to determine the maximum possible error uh, in approximating f of 3.1 with the third degree Taylor polynomial. All right, so we got to remember the error term. It's less than or equal to this mysterious m value um, and then the absolute value of x minus a to the n plus 1 over n plus 1 factorial. If you think about the way the Taylor... Uh, formula looks. This looks kind of like the first term that you're leaving off, so kind of like alternating series if you've already studied those. Um, but it has that m there. Uh, so what we need to do is figure out what m is. Uh, An m is the maximum of the absolute value of the n plus first derivative. So this is just, yeah, memorize this. On the interval, uh, so I didn't write the interval, it's either the interval from a, which is the center, to x, where you're evaluating it. So in this case, uh, it'd be 3 and 3.1. Um, or it's it could be the reverse if the place where you're evaluating is to the left of the center. So x is going to be 3.1. That's where we're evaluating. A is going to be 3. That's the center. And then I'm going to say m is 2. Uh, now let me explain why m is 2. Um, so from the table, I know that the fourth derivative goes through the point 3.2. I also am told that uh, the function is decreasing. So it kind of logically, uh, if the absolute value part wasn't there, then 2 would have to be the maximum. 
Um, but it does, m comes from the uh, maximum of the absolute value of the m plus first derivative. So what could happen is this. Uh, you could go through the point 0.32 and also the point 0.3.1 negative 1, but it's the absolute value, so you would reflect that. So that point now is 3.1 comma 1, and 2 is still the maximum. So now we just uh, kind of fill in the formula. So the maximum error is less than or equal to 2. Um, 3.1 minus 3 to the fourth over 4 factorial. And usually you don't even really simplify that. I mean, I guess if you had a calculator, you would. But uh, so that's just a sample problem. I hope you found it helpful, and good luck.